and welcome to the Romanian winter wonderland. Well, we are in Romania and it is winter. The wonderland part I made up. But I'm still very excited today because the car that I'm driving is probably the hottest or at least one of the hottest electric vehicles that are currently available. Now you've probably heard the Tesla killer thrown around quite a lot in recent years. I don't think there has been a more deserving vehicle of that title than, uh, than the Kia EV6. The wonderful Kia EV6. A car that is uh, nice to look at, more in person than in the photos. It is great to be aboard of, it feels very premium, it has uh, probably one of the most advanced electric vehicle platforms in the industry right now, eGMP. It has amazing range figures and a whole lot more. So what is the platform that this vehicle is based on? Because it is the reason why the Kia EV6 is so impressive. Well, it was developed for Kia and Hyundai and for both companies, the platform's first use was in a crossover. Kia made the EV6 and uh, Hyundai made the Ionic 5. Not really sure about the names of either of these vehicles, but there you go. But the EV6 and Ionic 5 not only look very different on the outside and on the inside, but they also drive quite differently. The Kia is set up more for uh, sportiness, while the, the Hyundai is uh, a more uh, relaxing, comfortable type vehicle. This is reflected in the interior as well. The Kia does genuinely feel sportier. I mean, in this GT line model, you get this black headliner and um, the black headliner. There will be a dedicated Kia EV6 GT version with close to 600 horsepower and uh, uh, not to 100 kilometers per hour time of uh, 3.5 seconds. And that will probably get sport seats, which is what I was going to say because this GT line just gets regular non-sporty seats. Most modern electric vehicles run on a 400 volt electric system, but this Kia EV6 and the Ionic 5, courtesy of eGMP, they have 800 volts. And as a result, you can charge them even quicker. An 800 volt system could theoretically allow for charging at up to 350 kilowatts. The EV6 is currently rated at just, just 240, which is a lot. It can bring the battery from 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. So the claimed range for the version that I'm driving today, which is the longest range version currently available, is 528 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle, which is a little bit more than 300 miles. When I picked the car up from Kia yesterday, from Kia Romania, whom I thank for allowing me to drive this car because I was super excited about it, the car was charged to 100% and it showed 355 kilometers with heating and seat heating and the heated steering wheel on. So it's um, a bit off the official claim. So then I limited heating to the driver's side. I dropped the level of uh, seat heating down to one, although I did keep the heated steering wheel on, and it jumped to 412. And keep in mind, it was like one or two degrees Celsius. I can definitely see this vehicle achieving the 500, the claimed 500 kilometers on one charge in uh, better temperature conditions. The car's onboard charger tops out at 11, like 10.9 kilowatts. So it'll take a lot longer to charge the battery, especially this big battery in this uh, long range version, the biggest battery. It has a capacity of 82 kilowatt hours, but the claimed usable capacity is 77.4. There's also a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack available, and that has a usable capacity of 58 kilowatt hours. And if you opt for that, the vehicle will have around 100 kilometers less range. My tester is the rear wheel drive only, as I said, and the rear motor in this vehicle makes 225 horsepower and 350 Newton meters of torque. It will sprint to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.3 seconds. And all versions of EV6 top out at 185 kilometers per hour or 115 miles per hour. Even the 325 horsepower version, that also tops out at the same speed. 
So this car is fully loaded. I'll get into that in a little bit, but it not only has the adaptive cruise control, but it can also change lanes for you. So let's see if it does that. I'm indicating, the car is looking, the augmented head-up display is showing me some stuff. I need to put my hand on the wheel. Okay, now will you do it? Let's try it again. Conditions not met. What do you mean? Now it's doing it. <laughs> Such a weird feeling. There's also a base uh, 168 horsepower rear wheel drive model. And if you opt for all wheel drive on the smaller battery pack, you do get two motors, but they make less power together. So it makes 235 horsepower versus the 225 you get in this uh, rear wheel drive model with the larger battery. The smaller battery pack is uh, about 100 kilos lighter. In this particular configuration, it weighs just under two tons. So as I said earlier, even though this EV6 and the Ionic 5 are related and very similar underneath, the Hyundai's wheelbase is actually one centimeter longer. And as I said, the Hyundai is softer and more comfort oriented, which means the um, EV6 should handle really well around corners. And I did throw it around a few corners and it's certainly good it's sure-footed enough and it gives you confidence to push even though you sit very very high in this vehicle and this will result in you moving around from side to side when you corner because while the body control is good it's not perfect and while roll isn't as pronounced when you uh, step on the brakes suddenly the car lurches forward it pitches and the suspension sometimes is a bit fidgety it's fine when you're on smooth roads like this one, but on bumpier roads, you do start to notice the sportier setup that Kia went for. You can, if you want, disable all of the traction and stability aids, and we might do that later, because being a rear wheel drive with instant torque, you should be able to have fun in this. Some manufacturers don't let you disable the, the electronic nannies, but the EV6 does and it's all the better for it. So my electricity consumption since setting off today is 33.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is quite a bit off what Kia claims this car can do, but again, not ideal temperatures, and I'm not trying to uh, max out the range or the efficiency in any way. I'm just driving it as I would a normal car, which I think is the point of testing an electric car. You shouldn't adapt your uh, driving style you should see how well the car adapts to you. Boy, the steering is definitely sharp, but it's not overly sharp. I actually like it. You know, in some vehicles that are set up to be overtly sporty, the steering can feel a bit um, unsettling. I mean, it feels like it unsettles the car if you apply too much lock too quickly. But this, even though it's sharp and is there feedback? I can almost, feels like there is. But in the Kia, it is very, very well judged. Good, good job, really good job on the steering calibration. Another thing I noticed about the EV6 is that the three driving modes that you have at your disposal, Eco, Normal and Sport, in Eco mode, if you had the all wheel drive version, it would use a clutch pack to disengage the front motor. And interestingly, it would still be engaged if you uh, selected the more powerful region and the rear motor couldn't handle that on its own. So that's very, very interesting. I don't know of another vehicle that can disconnect its motor. The only one that does that, the only ones now, are the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron GT. Those will disengage their rear motor because they have a two-speed gearbox and they can do that. And they will happily run in front-wheel drive mode in their most efficient settings, which is kind of amusing. A front wheel drive Porsche, some of the time anyway. So this does the same, but it keeps the power to the rear motor. Kia really tried to uh, maximize use of space in this vehicle. So even though there isn't really that much room under the hood in the front, the manufacturer really, really tried to, um, to create a frunk. In my tester, which is the rear wheel drive car, it is a box, so you open up the, the hood 
and then you open up another box where you store your stuff. And in rear-wheel drive vehicles, it's 57 liters, while if you opt for all-wheel drive, that drops to 20 liters. So it isn't really particularly um, usable. You can't even store the charging cable in there if you have an all-wheel drive vehicle. But still, you have to give Kia credit for trying. I mean, other vehicles, similar vehicles from other manufacturers, aside from Tesla, don't have it, like the um, ones from Volkswagen, the ID4 and the ENIAC. Check out reviews of both those cars on my channel. I had a lot to say about them as well. So if you put the car in eco mode, it theoretically uh, uses the positioning system, the GPS, to gauge when it would be best to give you uh, maximum regen or just allow you to coast, depending on, on the road. I'm pretty sure it also knows what's in front of you and it also adjusts regen based on that. Although I haven't um, actually observed it I'm sure it should do that. I've seen it in other cars, not other Kias. And it makes regen uh, accessible to people who may not be familiar with uh, the changes you have to make when you drive an EV, when you're switching from an ICE vehicle to EV. You can also adjust regen via the paddles on the steering wheel. So the more you pull on the right paddle, the more coasting you get, while the more you pull on the left, the more regen you get. If you pull on it once, it starts slowing down. If you pull on it twice, it slows down more. If you pull on it three times, you really, really feel the deceleration. And then it moves into a mode called iPedal. Some people like that. I'm not a big fan of one pedal driving, although it's maybe just because I have not driven electric vehicles enough. But in this Kia, the iPedal thing is great. It not only brings the car to a complete stop without you having to touch the brakes, you, when you come to a stop, you don't have to um, press the brake. The car holds its position on its own. So in traffic, you would really genuinely only use the, the go pedal, both to move and to stop. I think this is one of the best implementations of, uh, of one pedal driving that I've ever had the chance to, to experience. It's brilliant, even I like it. Not everyone likes the way the EV6 looks. It is quite a weird looking car for many people, especially because it's not clear what it is. Is it a um, crossover? Is it a normal hatchback? Is it a um, fastback? Is it a coupe-like hatchback thing? But I think that um, in person, it looks really, really good. Many people have said this, that in photos, the EV6 doesn't um, seem to be that attractive, but in, uh, in person they like it, they say it looks great, and I agree. And it looks totally different to the Ionic 5, which has an 80s, 90s, neo-retro futuristic vibe about it that I absolutely love. Whereas the EV6 just looks like a modern, contemporary, sporty car. The front end doesn't really look like that of a typical Kia. It no longer has the tiger nose design, although it kind of is there. Kia calls this the digital tiger face. From the side, the vehicles, you can see the roof line that dips towards the rear. The vehicle doesn't look particularly high and it doesn't look especially big in photos, although if you um, see it in person, you will notice just how big it is. I have to say that I really like the rear spoiler, the roof deck lid spoiler thing. It's very nicely integrated and it has some inexplicable lights on the sides. I'm not sure what they're illuminating, but they're there. I wanted to say they are puddle lights, but their light doesn't actually reach the ground all that well. I mean, I'm not sure why they're there. I also like the wraparound LED bar thing that goes all the way around the, the rear end. I like the semi-hidden charge port location. I think that's great. And I like that they managed to make the rear light cluster, the light bar, it's actually an aerodynamic feature. It's a spoiler, a ducktail spoiler made out of LEDs. It's really, really striking. This car rides on 20 inch wheels, which are the mid-range wheels. You get 19s as standard and you can opt for 20s or 21s. So I'm going to put it in sport mode. I'm going to press the traction control button. I won't disable the uh, ESP because I do not want to wrap this car around the tree. 
it might just be me, but whenever I drive an electric car in a sporty manner, I like to keep regen off if possible because I'm not trying to uh, max out the efficiency. I'm clearly just trying to um, use up as many electrons as possible. Okay. It is willing to play, but you should not forget that it's a big car that's kind of tall and it's kind of heavy. So probably not the best one to throw around. So I keep regen off when quickly driving an EV just to be able to um, modulate the brake perfectly. It might just be me, but I'm doing that now. So whenever I lift off, the car just coasts. So again, I really, really like the steering. I noticed it even just driving in town that I was really able to um, perfectly correct my trajectory without uh, overcorrecting or undercorrecting, even though I don't know this vehicle. That's a plus. My electricity consumption has dropped to 28.8, but it's probably gonna rise again, so sorry about that. Squirt out of corners, very nice. It's actually quite sure-footed, even with just rear-wheel drive and in these conditions where the road might be frozen, we might get black ice, but it's perfectly fine. Perfectly, perfectly adequate. It's actually more engaging to drive than I, um, I thought it was gonna be. Okay, feisty. I think the ESP um, does its job. Should we off-road in this? Is it allowed? Hmm. How bad can it be? This is an SUV after all. Let's try. Enable the cameras. Enable the cameras. Oh, okay. And we can drive, oh, come on, don't turn off. What's the speed, maybe is it 10? I kind of want to see this all the time. Okay, I guess not. Off-roading in the Kia EV6. It's good, it can handle it. I'm gonna get it dirty though. Okay, definitely a bit slippery here. <laughs> Some wood around. Oh no, the rear end is going away from me. What will I be able to do? <laughs> it's so funny just drifting an electric car around because the power is always instant and it breaks traction just like that. Fun. Hopefully I will not get stuck in here. Let's do one more lap. Can't hurt, right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Man, it's gonna be so dirty after this. Okay, one more lap and then we're done. Well, why would you go straight here? Come on, come on, I know, I know you don't want us to get stuck here. Wonder if I disable the systems all the way, will it become even more wayward? ESC disabled, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh okay. Okay, yeah, 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 I got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Okay, it can do it. So what have we drawn from this? Well, the Kia EV6 is fun both on and off-road, even with just rear-wheel drive. Although any car could have driven this uh, slightly snow-covered uh, 
dirt road. Okay, I will find a nice place to stop and I'll show you the interior and draw the conclusions. I will begin with the driving position, which is um, quite high. You really feel like you're sitting on the car instead of in it, which in my book detracts from the sportiness, but it's not really that bad. I mean, it could be better, but it's not horrible either. You get used to it and the uh, seats are very comfortable. You can adjust them, you can recline them, and they also have uh, heating and ventilation in this top of the line model so that's pretty good headroom is kind of tight as you can see i'm 183 centimeters tall and um, you know this doesn't leave a lot of headroom and my seat is cranked all the way down when it comes to the design of the dash um, you get these two screens they are curved i'm not sure if you can see it the steering wheel has just two spokes it has physical buttons on both sides, which is great. Here you can control the, the screen. And through this you um, adjust the cruise control. And this is where you skip to the next track, volume. Interestingly, the controls for the seat heating and the cooling in this case are... Uh, kind of unusually placed here. So they are all touch buttons. Um, I did find myself cooling the passenger seat for no reason a couple of times. Maybe, I don't know, I just put my, my hand here and I hit it by accident. That could totally be a thing. But the seats are excellent. The heating is great. The steering wheel is hot all around. It's not just this part that warms up, which is what you get in some cheaper cars that have a heated steering wheel. This rotary control puts the car in gear. You have an auto hold button here. Behind it is um, the wireless charger, which I think is quite conveniently placed. The central cubby is super big, like very, very deep. It's pretty good. The key seems to have evolved a bit, and you also have the summon functions on the key. I must also give a shout out to the excellent surround view cameras. The car is super, super messy now, I'm sorry about that, but I assure you, they are crystal clear. Like, some of the best on the market. Better than most, I would say. You can also zoom in or out. One thing I will say uh, that I'm not totally on board with is the fact that uh, in order to increase regen you have to pull on the left paddle while the right decreases regen. It takes the car more towards coasting. I would have had them the other way around but it's, um, it's not a tragedy. I also like the placement of the drive mode button. It's within easy reach and you can just cycle through the modes really quickly and if you hold the car goes into snow mode. The door pockets get ambient light. That's nice. There's also some uh, lighting around here. And uh, this strip. And then these strips. And below them is a very interesting climate control solution. So Kia chose to have this touch panel that has two styles. So this one is for climate and then you access the um, sat nav shortcuts. You still get a physical rotary control for volume and if you press it, it turns off everything or the music at least. And the tuning knob on this part, this texture here on the dash is actually pretty cool and you can actually hear it. This feels like a like a material, like fabric or something. It's very nice. The material on the seats is also uh, worthy of a shout out because it is made entirely out of recycled plastic bottles, they say. Over a hundred bottles go into the upholstery in this car, they say. One major advantage of the eGMP platform is the fact that the floor is completely flat. Kia chose this console thing that protrudes into nothingness here. On the Ionic 5, the console stops here and this is just free space. But in the Kia, you get... Um, so one USB-C, one cigarette lighter, another USB-C, another USB 
older style USB, this huge spot for a handbag or something. I also like the dedicated EV6 mats. Um, not sure how to put this, but this car is huge for leg room, courtesy of the big wheelbase. It's, it's huge, although, let me just put my camera here, crank up the ISO, and as you can see, I can't really slide my feet under the front seats, which might be a problem. Although, to be fair, having this much room, you can just fidget around here and not have to stretch under the seat, I guess. In this top of the line model, you also get a heated rear bench, which is pretty great. In fact, only the outer two seats are heated. A um, simple armrest, it's pretty cool. The same texture that is on the dashboard is also present on the armrest. Oh, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, the pattern is continued. You know, these are aligned. That's pretty cool. Attention to detail. From the rear, you can also see just how thin the seat backs are. Kia put emphasis on this, that it wanted to uh, make them as thin as possible. This car also has airbags between the seats, so in the event of a side crash, uh, the passengers are not going to smash into one another. Some reviewers have complained about the headrests, but me and my bad posture love them. Not sure what this is though. Allegedly, it's supposed to be a grab handle. I think it's ridiculous. I don't like it. I mean, they could have just ended the seat here, giving you a little bit of uh, visibility through there. Not the best solution, I think. It looks interesting and I can see, you know, that it's meant to look like it's one piece, I guess. USB-C here, USB-C there, USB-Cs everywhere, except for in the front there where you get an older USB. No controls here, this is completely blank. This car is very bad for visibility, so uh, Kia decided to put this little quarter light in the rear. Let me demonstrate how bad it is. Okay, so this is visibility out the back, and that's what the little quarter light does. Pretty much nothing. It's not very good. And also, sticking to uh, visibility, this A-pillar is quite thick and bulky, and it is not only big uh, like this, but it is also very thick, I think. I'll show you the frunk now. You open it through here. Like you would a normal hood. It's got struts. And le frunk. It's actually a decent size, 57 liters. It's pretty good. In the all-wheel drive version, you only get like this bit here, like the bit on top. So this bottom is completely uh, used up by the, the front motor. Kind of an unusual thing. I would imagine this is not uh, watertight or weathertight, but this, well, not sure if you can rely on these to keep your stuff dry in there, but hey. And finally, the trunk. 500-ish liters, I'll put it up on screen. The Meridian, the optional Meridian sound system eats into this under storage, this under floor storage rather. You can fold the seat backs through here. You have a cigarette lighter. So the vehicle that I'm driving today costs 63,586 euros VAT included. And it has pretty much everything on it. The color is snow white pearl, and it's definitely a very pearly white. This vehicle, just like any other vehicle built on the eGMP platform, gets vehicle to load and a special adapter, which basically allows you to plug that adapter into the charge port. And then you can plug anything into there, a vacuum cleaner, a espresso machine, or whatever you want. This example also has a heat pump which is only available on the long range version. I think the EV6 is pretty good. It is very well built. It has a lot of tech. It has cameras all around. It can drive itself. It can change lanes itself. It is one of the fastest charging electric vehicles currently on the market. I think it's 
you should totally consider the EV6. And I don't and I think the best version is the one that I'm driving today, the rear wheel drive car with the big battery pack. Should you find it a bit too sporty and uh, stiffly sprung, you might then want to consider the Hyundai Ioniq 5. But if you're in the market for a electric crossover right now, you would be foolish to overlook the Kia EV6. It is one of the hottest EVs on the market right now. Thanks for watching.